video today and and then we will get started on today's mastermind thank you everyone for joining us uh, grateful for you to be here and let's go ahead and see if this is going to work right here oh not that one videos hmm Maybe it won't work. That's okay. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to a, another Capital Gains Tax Solutions Mastermind, um, where we believe most high net worth individuals and those who help them, they struggle with clarifying their capital gains tax deferral options. Not having a clear plan is the enemy. And using a proven tax, an amazing way for you to create and preserve wealth or help your clients, friends, and family do the same. But more than that, to unlock freedoms that perhaps you desire, like location freedom, time freedom, a Ability to sell your business or real estate or other highs called tax flow and cash flow. I know for some of our clients, it's, hey, I want to diversify. For some of our clients, I want to be out of debt. For some of our clients, eliminating that, that, that struggle with the 1031 exchange, they don't want to buy. Um, for some of our clients, it's, you know, being entrepreneurial freedom, unlocking a piece of capital um, to be invested into another piece of capital, but at optimal timing, whatever, whatever it might be for you, we're just so glad that you're are here. I'm um, here to support you in your journey with the Deferred Sales Trust, or maybe it's a different option as well, guys, fun. But, but during this mastermind, during like this, maybe this master class, we're here to talk about the ideas and also help you overcome different, different uh, maybe um, um, objections that you might have for the Deferred Sales Trust. And in fact, today's topic, so I don't remember, it's a number one topic that comes up in every single deal, and it's, it's the dilemma of control with the Deferred Sales trust. So that is the subject of today's kind of kick off like uh, uh, talk on introduction to what we're going to be talking about today. Is Brett Swartz, and I am the founder of Capital Gains Tax Solutions. I'm also a multifamily broker, um, investor, and I have the privilege of being joined by some of the when it comes to finance and real estate and investing um, uh, with a DJ Jake Miller who's on the call. Jake, how are we doing today? Doing very well, thank you. And uh, I think. By and large, our, our main goal that we try to accomplish here is educate people. The other day, that the Deferred Sales Trust is the most vetted strategy that your CPA doesn't know about. And so that we're here spreading the good word, right? Exactly. We do think it does take some belief because oftentimes people believe it's too good to be true. So it does take some faith and some trust in what we do in the strategy, but we do believe we have the evidence and the track record close to over 30 years now, um, thousands thousands of closes, over 24 no change IRS audits, private like rulings, national law firms, and we're about to change as it pertains to any of the audits. And uh, you now the investments are investments. Those are going to go high and low, but our goal is to help you see how 25 to 50% of your gain that would have been taxed can be deferred up to 100% of your capital gains tax can be deferred by using the deferred sales trust. But more than that, again, the transformation that we really believe in, which is the difference uh, between a lot of other strategies that provide some freedoms, but don't, not as many as the deferred sales trust. And so let's talk about the dilemma of control. In fact, I actually had, had uh, you know, chat G GPT write a, a, uh, a story, right? And this is a story I want to share with you. And I, and I want to pull out some, some of the themes that we've seen over the years. And I said, hey, write an ebook story on, in the first person view that highlights the emotional pain of having a highly appreciated asset that is subject to massive capital gains tax and taking up their time, their energy, their stress, and how the deferred sales trust helped them overcome their problem. Uh, right in the tone and style of John Maxwell. For those of you who John Maxwell is, um, he's one of the top leadership um, communicators uh, in the past 30 years. He's world-class. I've had the privilege of seeing him speak in person, read multiple books. He just came out with a book called, I think, The 16 um, Laws of Communication, and uh, where he dives in. I was listening to a podcast about this morning, and he talked about the number one thing for communicators is to make sure that you're connecting with whoever you're speaking with. In other words, you're sitting in their shoes and you're really understanding where they're coming from. In other words, 
get over yourself or get over the thing that you're, that you're proposing or the product that you're selling and really try to step into the shoes. And so I'm trying to take this approach here by having uh, ChatGPT help me. And so I want to tell you a little bit of a, this story. Tell me what you think. And we're going to have a little fun with this. Uh, the ChatGPT title this, The Unexpected Toll, A Journey from Tax Overwhelm of the Deferred Sales Trust. Number one, chapter one, the problem. And these are like, you know, two sentence chapters. It won't be very long. It says the problem. I was blessed with the fortune, the, with a fortune early on, a commercial property that I had invested in and blossomed into an asset of remarkable value. It wasn't merely a piece of land anymore; it was a gold mine. Yet with this pro prosperity came a burden, a challenge that I was ill prepared to face: the daunting specter of massive capital gains tax. And for some people, it's not just land; it's commercial real estate, it's a primary home, it's cryptocurrency. But in other words, they've made it really well. They've, they've built it. They maybe they caught some luck and they invested well. And now it's highly appreciated. And now the problem is capital gains tax, right? That's the, that's, that's the struggle, which is chapter two. Day by day, this financial obligation consumed my energy and time. In fact, we just closed a deal in Idaho. And this is the exact theme um, for a client of ours um, who had five mobile home parks. He was working a W-2 um, and, uh, job and, and he went to a seminar about 10 years ago and he just started to follow the method of buying mobile home parks. Well, he built that up to a $10 million portfolio and he goes, Brett, I had achieved financial freedom, but my problem was I had the sleepless nights. I had the burden of managing the managers and these sleep at nights became a ritual as I combined through the endless tax documents, you know, regulations or changing your tenants and things through COVID. And I was seeking a way out of the predicament. What was the predicament? Well, it wasn't the financial freedom anymore. It was really the time and the energy and the stress freedom. And so he said the, you know, he, he even put in his word, it was pretty, it was kind of a heavy burden. So it's chat GPT also puts the, the burden was heavy and the stress was beginning to take its toll on my health and relationships. And he says the turning point, I needed a solution, a reprieve from this relentless pressure. That's when I discovered the concept of the deferred sales trust, the DST. I was initially skeptical yet intrigued. Could this be the answer for my predicament? I took a leap of faith and decided to delve deeper, right? So in other words, he had an open, and I would encourage you if you're listening to this to have an open mind and what's actually possible, right? And he says, the, dis the discovery is chapter four. In simple terms, the DST was a method to defer capital gains tax on the sale of my property. By using a DST, I could sell my property, invest the proceeds, and defer the capital gains tax. The prospect was enticing, yet I wondered, was this too good to be true? Chapter five, the decision. After, cons after consultations with tax experts and sleepless nights of introspection, I chose to proceed with the DST. I was nervous and excited, but more than anything, hopeful. The transfer of my asset to the DST felt like a lifting a tremendous weight off my shoulders. And this is, I think, the, the core of who we are and what we believe is just try to take some burden, some stress off of your shoulders if you own the property, the asset, and you're looking for a way to have a new chapter. I'm going to pause here. That's just, we're just through a couple chapters. I want to see if Jake Miller has some insights or some thoughts on what was just said. Yeah. So this is a chapter out of, out of the book and it's a very exciting chapter of financial freedom where essentially this individual from a W2 job implemented something that allowed him to be the proud owner of a $10 million aggregate of mobile home parks, but being the proud owner of something of such great value also made him a slave to the life of a landlord. The headaches of all the tax returns, all the accounting, the headaches of fixing that to toilet, fixing that apartment, modeling, the headaches of dealing with city ordinances, politics, and life was wonderful economically, but horrible from quality of, of hey, what he wanted to do. Now, he was able to get out of that because of the deferred sales trust. He was able to actually diversify his underlying assets or move out of what he actively participated in and uh, these these are probably the next chapters and i'm i'm leading ahead a little bit i'm i'm ruining i'm ruining the, the the rest of the story here but eventually because of the deferred sales trust he has a happy ending yeah let's continue on right and those, but these are all those are all good insights there so the outcome the transformation was remarkable my stress eased my sleep improved the time i once spent fret was now spent on things I loved. And I think this is this is really true for our clients. Um, they get more time is the biggest thing. And sometimes they don't they don't know how much stress it is. I think it's for any of us, right? Until we're on the other side of whatever the thing that we've been in the a consistent habit of for many, many years. Um, it reminds me of Warren and Catherine, another another two clients of mine. And Warren shared his story about two months ago here on this here on this webinar or uh, mastermind. 
and he was driving about four and a half hours from the Bay Area, um, uh, or actually he was living in the Bay Area. Uh, they were living um, um, on the other side of uh, near like like Reno, Nevada, and having to drive into Sacramento. But the point is that drive and that stress was taken away from the time he could spend with his twin daughters. And so he says he was, you know, trading the two T's, his twin daughters for toilet trash, tennis, termites, right. And all of, all of that. And he's going for what we've, we've owned real estate for 30 years. We've 1031 exchange that was what we were taught to do. We had no real inclination to sell our, our cash flow was doing great, but it was what the DST could do for his, their time and energy as a family. And, and so, the transformation then was remarkable. Um, and I had known them for 15 years, right? And have been talking about the DST for about eight and then really got even more serious as we closed more deals. And, and then I was able to represent them and, and sell. But the point was, he talks about his stress and how nice it is now to not have to think about it anymore. And although he loved the property, he loved working with the tenants. He, he actually, the burden wasn't so much, oh, I, I dread working with the tenants. He actually really enjoyed the tenants. He found the property was more like, you know, um, a labor of love. And he he actually, part of him enjoyed, you know, improving the property or, or fixing things. Like it wasn't, it wasn't so much that as it was his time that he found that it was taking away from the family. And so it could be different for everybody, but by making the shift to the DSD, I had not only deferred my capital gains tax, but also reclaimed my life. Now, this aren't his words. This is the chat GPT, but I'm just kind of weaving in some of the things that we've seen with our clients. And so chapter seven, the reflection. Looking back, I am grateful for the journey I embarked on. The path was rough, yet it led me to a better understanding of my financial responsibilities and possibilities. For Warren and Catherine, by the way, their NOI was $120,000. With the deferred sales trust, we're estimating the cash flow to be put $190,000, except um, less stress, obviously, more diversification, more cash flow. For them in particular, they were owning in California, which has, you know, in the last 10 years become harder and harder and harder to be a landlord. And so he, it, was a, it, was a, it was a big thing for them. So he said, I share my story with the hope that others facing similar challenges might find solace and solutions in the deferred sales trust. In the end, it wasn't just about managing an asset. It was about learning to navigate the storms of life with grace, knowing and uh, a little bit of trusted advice. And so, Jake Miller, what do you think? Anything else? Is that a good way to, to, to kick off these masterminds with a little bit of chat GPT's help and weaving in some client stories for some inspiration? I think it is very helpful. Also, because a lot of people nowadays are going to chat GPT for everything. It's kind of nice to see what chat, chat GPT is saying about the deferred sales trust. Now, again, we want everyone to know that if you can't find your answers, in regards to the deferred sales trust that's why we have this call every single friday and we often share a deal story of the week so that we can make it real and when i say a deal story of the week or a past deal that we've had so that through other people's experiences you can relate and then maybe even we can prompt some questions because the last half of this call we always do q a and uh, that's what we're here for again to educate let you know what's available and should you be having that highly appreciated asset of yours if you're going to put it up for sale or should you be having the highest transactional event of your life and you want to know if the deferred sales trust is right for you there are a few qualifying items that we go through with clients brett to see if it is right for them and and what are those items you know the first thing would be we want to make sure it's, it's it's a big enough gain you have a big enough gain and a big enough net proceeds on the transaction and the key is what we're solving for is capital gains tax right that's the challenge and that is is that we want to provide the solution, which is the DST. So it needs to be a big enough gain. And that gain will determine your capital gains tax. It's typically somewhere between 25 and as high as actually 67% if you're a C Corp. Um, kind of hard to imagine that we tax that much. But most of the time, it's about California, about 37 minimum to 40 is a good range. Depending what state you're in, it could be as low as 25 because guess what? Some states don't have the income tax portion on the capital gain. So First of all, defining what what what, what is what is large enough to make sense on to have the trust set up, the costs associated, and the investments. That'd be the first one, Jake. What would be the second one that someone might might just dis discover um, if the deferred sales trust is, is a good fit? So you, you talked about the size of the deal or the size of the tax pay, right? The next would be what are your goals and objectives with the proceeds? What what do you plan to do with the money when you when you sell that big asset, right? And again, if you're looking to diversify the underlying assets, if you're looking to grow your net worth, if you're looking to reinvest, the Deferred Sales Trust is a perfect financial tool for you. Now, if you're 
looking just to catch out, cash out and spend all the money on on a, a world cruise or on a $3.5 million Lamborghini or, or, or something that is not business related or investment related, then the deferred sales trust, that is not an appropriate use or an appropriate goal or an objective to use the deferred sales trust with. And the reason for that, by the way, is the government gives us these tax deferral strategies in order to stimulate and grow the economy. And that's the main force. Like, how do we keep money flowing and moving that can go back into businesses or investments that actually will create more jobs, which will actually create more tax revenue? So if you think about it, the IRA or the 401k or even a 1031 exchange, the main, the main reason for that, as far as the government is concerned, is they can't force us to sell. They can't force us to invest into our retirement and save, um, but they can encourage us through tax incentives. Um, and those tax incentives, guess what? Go into the stock market, go into real estate, um, also encourage uh, you know companies to reinvest and to grow. And as they grow, they're going to hire more people typically. And when they hire more people, it's going to create more tax revenue. And so this is the flow and the study of macroeconomics. And so the deferred sales trust is kind of like an IRA, kind of like a 401k, kind of like a 1031 exchange, but it's specialized for highly appreciated assets. And what are those assets, by the way, Jay, just in case someone's wondering, is it, is it just real estate like a 1031 or, is it, you know, what, what other assets can be used for this, Jake? We, we get a lot of clarifying questions about the assets and essentially anything that shows up on your balance sheet. And it might be your personal financial statement side of the balance sheet. It might be your business balance sheet. To clarify that, even your personal residence, should the appreciated gain when you go to sell it be significant enough, then absolutely even your personal residence qualifies, which it doesn't for other tax strategies like the 1031 and other things. But for the deferred sales trust, it does qualify, depending, of course, on the use of the proceeds, if you're looking to reinvest, if you're going to sell your home and go buy an investment property, if you're going to sell your home, go invest in stock. So we have a client, Brett, right now that we're discussing that it, you can go and Google right now, if you wish, a big pharmaceutical sell, $10.8 billion, key executive, vice president of the company, who might just have $100 million or so, you know, a stock option, which is also an asset and that's eligible. So whether it be crypto, a digital asset, whether it be real estate, a physical tangible asset, whether it be your rights or warrants or options to something else, those are also assets. Even certain contracts, Brett, we have a client who is selling their portfolio of property management contracts, and that is eligible for the deferred sales trust as an asset. Very well said. Um... Also, artwork collectibles. Um, it could be it could be antique, like you know, um, a car. It could be like a jet or a plane. It could be it could be really just about any highly appreciated asset. Just being one million net proceeds, one million dollar game. And like Jake said, as long as you're not looking to invest all of it into something of personal use. By the way, you might sell a $5 million business and want a million dollars to go do whatever you want with. Can you do a partial DST with $4 million? Yes. And have the other million just pay tax? Of course. It's no problem. By the way, can you do a partial 1031 exchange if you find that perfect property? If you're selling a $10 million asset and you find the perfect one for $4 million, but you have an extra $6 million of boot left over? Yes. You can do a partial deferred sales trust there and a partial um, um, 1031 exchange. Can you do a partial Delaware 1031? Yes. That's a way to uh, defer tax uh, via the 1031 into like a portfolio of properties. And so we work with, with Jake to, to execute those as well. And so the key here is defining what your outcome, where you wanna be, and, and also defining where you're at the problem, and then finding a team to help you execute. And we wanna, um, part of why we wanna uh, talk about this is to help you understand um, and help you get comfortable with us about how we can help you execute that and how it could fit for you. By the way, Jake, I want to dive back into the dilemma because we actually just got to the first part of the story. Yes. And so remember the dilemma of control. So after that first story, I said, you know what? Um, my assistant was like, what, what are we going to call today's mastermind? I go, well, I've got a couple of deals and the main thing keeps coming up is control. And so I asked chat GPT, um, and by the way, 4.0, and I, I bought the subscription. I encourage it because it seems like it's a, it's a good investment for, for what, what, what the, the, the level of expertise or the level of, 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 um, of value it brings. So I said, now write a chapter on someone who wants to use the deferred shell stress, but is struggling with giving up too much control, help them overcome this and feel at ease. And it says chapter eight, the dilemma of control. It says control. It was a fundamental aspect of my life, something I clung to with a vice grip. And if you're an entrepreneur, 
like Jake or I, um, and you're in real estate, you're in business, you're, 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 you know, or you're not, you're just, you're just working and you have your investments, like controls with everybody. It's with every single deal. So it's not new to you. If you're feeling like, am I the only one thinking about this? It's every single deal. Um, it's the number one thing that uh, people have to um, get comfortable with. So let's, let's continue here. And it was this very need for control that made the prospect of a deferred sales trust daunting. It meant relinquishing ownership of my asset, letting it sail away from the harbor of my command, right? And by that, the way that we would look at this is the unilateral command, right? The unilateral control, what's called constructive receipt, which basically means you could walk into the bank and you have 10 million. You could say, hey, give me the 10 million. It's my money. There's no other additional signature versus what's called indirect control, which essentially is you as the lender have the rights and protections to take back if the collateral is not producing, paying you back. For example, if you own a multifamily property and, and you owe you know $5 million on that loan at 5%, well, if you're not paying back that loan on time, guess what the bank can do? They can take back control of the asset, the asset being the multifamily property and foreclose on you. So the idea is it is still control. It's just indirect control. And it's different for most of us because most of us are not in the banking industry, nor have we gave loans before, especially as it pertains to loaning on this highly appreciated asset that we've built blood, sweat, and tears for 5, 10, 20, 30 years. And so the struggle, which is chapter nine, the thought of someone else controlling my hard-earned asset was unnerving. The dilemma kept me awake at night, a, a, a relentless question spinning in my head. Could I trust the trust? Or in other words, could I trust the trustee? For those who haven't caught on yet, my name is uh, Brett Swartz. I'm the founder of Capital Gains Tax Relations, and I'm the trustee. So I would be a part of the potential team to help you execute on this deferred sales trust. Doubts caught up my mind, painting a picture of potential loss and regret. Chapter 10, The Revelation. During one of my consultations, a tax advisor sensing my discomfort said something that struck, struck a chord. He said, trust isn't about giving up control. It's about choosing who to control what. His words echoed in my mind, and I realized I was not losing control, but reallocating it. And I think this is so key, and I want Jake to opine on this, because guess what? If you've ever done a 1031 exchange before, guess what you did? You reallocated that control. If you've even invested with a financial advisor into uh, you know securities, guess what? You reallocated some control. Now, is it different? Yes, because the ownership is different. That is true. But Jake, could you talk about just the reallocating of control, regardless if somebody you know sells a ten million dollar asset, pays four million of tax, and has six million left over, and shows up for you to manage the money? versus 10 million with the trust, how would you help someone, you know, um, feel a little more comfortable with just relinquishing that control, Jake? Well, and I would just remind people, similar to what you've done, all the various other scenarios that people relinquish some level of control. And when you're looking to achieve a greater outcome or a bigger benefit, oftentimes the level of control you have to relinquish is higher. So if you're doing a 1031 exchange, there's a qualified intermediary for a period of time. If you're working with your estate planning attorney and you are doing your estate work, you might have an irrevocable trust, which has a trustee that you are delegating authority and rights to. Even within a corporation, if you are the owner of a corporation, you might have, you might sit on the board that you might delegate to a CEO, a vice president, you might delegate to a CFO, you might delegate to a COO authority, signatory authority that allows them to expense on your behalf or to work and to engage in contracting on your behalf. Similarly, with the deferred sales trust, you are providing that level of responsibility to a trustee simply so that this individual can act as a fiduciary. And this individual is not able to fully take on the role of a fiduciary unless they have discretion, meaning that they can independently make decisions on your behalf. Now, at the end of the day, a trustee, I would compare a trustee most accurately in my mind to that of a COO or chief operations officer of a corporation. And I deal with a lot of companies. And so that's like very intimate for me to align what a trustee does for you with what a COO does for you in the sense that daily operations, daily activities, contracts, signatures, investments, moving things here, moving things there. That's what a trustee is going to do for you on your behalf. And they do it in the name of the trust because they are, when the IRS looks at this structure, and again, this is critical so that you get the tax benefit, 
they are the person that the IRS would look at on the tax returns and on the formation documents and as well as you know all movements of money that are agreed upon prior and in fact some scenarios Brett there's even like a dual signature process whatever but that's what a trustee does Absolutely. And a couple of that too, uh, the 24 seven access to view the funds and the investments online uh, using a third party financial advisor, Jake Miller, securities professional funds are typically held at TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab or th third party banks. Also the ability to joint venture partner with the trust where um, you're the managing member of an LLC that partners with the trust to go into another real estate or business venture. It's all of these things that are in place where I guess you could call them either mechanisms and or a safeguards to keep transparency, to keep accountability. Another one is a third party tax preparer who reviews the entire p &L. It's actually like a corporate business trust is a good way to think about this. Like a, it's actually a business trust. And this, 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 this corporate business trust has a, its own corporate business tr trust tax return. And so there's a lot of eyes and ears along the tax attorney working with your CPA all of these groups, it's sort of like a family office type of environment. Now, is it a third party unrelated trustee? Yes, that's part of what keeps the integrity of this working. Do you, of course, you want to get to know me and, and talk with my references? Of course, we have all of that. But um, that that's, I think, really well said, Jake. Um, I'll, I'll move on to these, these last three chapters. It's called The Decision, The Outcome, and The Lesson. So chapter 11, I decided to change my perspective and focus on the potential benefits of the Deferred Sales Trust. I did my research and found a reputable trustee with a proven track record of protecting and growing assets. Gradually, the idea of the DST started to feel like a, less of a threat and more like an opportunity. And I would hope um, as we communicate and explore and be transparent with a lot of these masterminds in our community and everything that we're building here at Capital Gains Tax Solutions, that you would indeed see... Uh, myself with the trustee and our company and Jake as as assets and not liabilities as a part of helping you grow your wealth, helping you to exit. And by the way, you could have the best and most amazing team. Then Jake and I are great team players. We weave into that team to grow it together. And that's the key, depending on the needs and depending on the uh, the level of how active you want to be versus passive. Um, the Deferred Tales Trust is flexible and so are we, right, which is great. So the outcome, chapter 12, the decision to proceed with the DST was a turning point. Yes, I had to give up direct control, or in other words, unilateral control. But in doing so, I gained peace of mind, financial stability, tax deferral, and more time to enjoy the fruits of my labor. I think that's so key, right? The time is the one thing we can't get back. And if you have an opportunity to enjoy more of your time and your energy and your wealth, um, what can this mean for you? I realize control is not about uh, clutching tightly, but understanding when to let go. And the lesson, the journey taught me a valuable lesson. Controlling Control is as much about trust as it is about command. And sometimes to reach new heights, we must let go of what we hold so dearly and trust the process. In fact, uh, Stormy and Jeremy, they sold their, she's a um, like an ER nurse uh, at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona and talk about helping and, and being able to work as a team and trust people because she's helping people like with their with their lives right and so she's she really said a quote when she shared it on our, our youtube channel her her story of the deferred sales trust she talked about trusting the process right obviously doing your research asking the questions getting comfortable with who we are what we do with the deferred sales trust how it works but trusting the process and um yeah so with that i also want to pass a question to jake jake Kind of like the tree falls in a forest and no one hears it doesn't really make a sound if i have a 10 million dollar asset or 100 million dollar asset that i'm about to pay 40 million dollars of tax on um and i'm concerned with control um uh I, on the 60 million would be unilateral control on the in the 100 million in the trust right so that extra 40 million working right so am i really giving up the control that i think i'm giving up if the full hundred millions in the trust, in other words, I'm just trying to think of choose your control, right? The government, uh, with we follow the tax code and follow the rules with, with the deferred sales trust, is essentially saying, as long as you don't have unilateral control, that extra 40 million can work for you and your family and build wealth. The other 60 is going to take up living some control. So maybe connect those dots there. Any, any, any thoughts on that? Just that kind of choose your control, have, you know, have, pay the tax and do it. Go ahead. What I'm hearing, Brett, is that we're giving the government control over the 40 million right away so that we can retain 100% absolute um, micromanager control over the 60. Or 
we delegate certain levels of control over the 100, but the 100 continues to work for us and our family. And, I, and it's a toss up. It's like, do I want to DYI? And I think that's the biggest thing here. If you want to DYI, you might end up with 60 that you can DYI and you're allowing that 40 that doesn't have to go to the government yet, but you're allowing that 40 million to go to the government now. Whereas with the deferred sales trust, we're able to retain the 100 and keep it working for us with the caveat that we're delegating control to a trustee. And that allows that 100 million to continue to work for us and our family and our legacy and our employees and all those that we influence in the economy. And again, back to your original point of these tax loopholes or these tax strategies are here to help spur economic growth within the community. That's why they exist. That's why the government allows these things to happen is so that we can keep the money working in our communities and, and within our businesses so that our employees continue to get bigger paychecks so that we can continue to buy more product and so that GDP continues to move. All right. So I'm going to get practical here, right? So this is an actual um, text from a potential uh, <clears throat> Potential client up and about control, and he he expressed some of his reservations as a big painter to control. And so I said, it sounds like you have reservations and don't like the lack of control the DST ultimately gives you, the way he understood it, right? I said, here are a few ways my clients who felt the same way regarding control were able to choose the DST um, with me and now feel great about how we work together. Number one, they spoke with other clients of mine um, before they closed who um, who had concerns with control. And so for anyone listening out there, if you, if you are um, if you're looking at this with us, guess what? We have a list of clients. And, and, and once you're, you're engaged with us on a conditional basis, we're happy to share those clients uh, with you so you can hear directly from them, their experience um, prior to closing, closing and post closing. Um, and, and Jake uh, ha, and Jake and I both have those as well, right? Number two, they spoke with uh, the creator of the structure. So one of our strategic alliances or the creator of the structure, he he you know he's the one who defends against the IRS. They can speak directly um, as it pertains to this. Um, and more than that, the, the things that we have in place um, to to um, to make sure that you're as comfortable as you can be without having what's called constructive receipt. So just another resource for you there, right? Um, number three, they mapped out a game plan with the financial advisor, Jake Jake Miller, right, um, in order to know exactly where and how the funds are going to be invested. Um, I think that's key to understand as well. These funds aren't going into a, a business account or a co or, or not going into a my uh, capital gains tax versus business account or a personal account. They're never commingled. These are single entity trusts that only do business with you, and if you're married, your spouse. And the funds are typically uh, opened up at like a, a big third party bank and or like a TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, where, where Jake is a financial advisor. So they, we map out exactly the timing of where and how the funds will be invested. Not only that, but how they'll be transferred from the exit, okay? And, and then also sometimes it's mapping out um, into commercial real estate. So you may not be as excited about the stock market, um, at least at this time, but you want some diversification. And so we're going to diversify some of it into real estate, some of it into uh, the stock market, some of it into the bank, some of it into T-bills right now, paying 4 to 5%. In other words, diversification of multiple parties is going to help, I think, de-risk the entire, the entire structure. And the last one is they mapped out an investment plan for their own real estate or own business venture um, using the joint venture LLC structure, which which essentially is, is kind of like checkbook control, if you will. Now, the investments need to be uh, you know looked at and, um, and essentially uh, underwritten prior to all of this happening. It's not like you can just hang out there and not have an investment. So I, as a trustee, I still have to review that, but we can review that before anything closes. And so that's, that's it. So happy to go over all of this with anyone who's interested. Um, that being said, I'd like to open it up for questions now, comments, um, and, uh, and maybe anyone who has a live deal too, we can, we can talk. So, uh, and Rebecca, by the way, nice to see you. Um, are you, uh, how are you doing there in, in Truckee and, and how's, how's, is the snow finally melting now? And Rebecca is one of our strategic alliances. She's a luxury realtor up there. Rebecca, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Brad. Um, yeah, snow's finally melting. Um, just depends on where you live in the community as to how much snow you still have, or if you still have any, um, yeah, yeah, things are good. Uh, yeah, I have family in town. So just taking some time to make sure I catch up on my DST info, um, you know, any little tidbits I can grab 
Yeah. Anything stick out for you on today's talk? Uh, I guess discourse between Jake and I. I, you know, um, I think the biggest hurdle um, is still what we talked about, and that is definitely dealing with the dilemma of control. And I think you hit um, answered a lot of those questions. Um, I think that is the biggest hurdle that I've come across when talking to people about it. So yeah. Yeah. And by the way, sometimes it, it, you can we can say, and you can still go through all this, but it does take that action. I call it riding the bike. You know, it, 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 we, we have found that it, there's no one's ever going to be 100% comfortable with, with 100% of something when it's so brand new and there's such high stakes until you're riding the bike. First time you ride the bike, the motorcycle, flying the plane, speak on stage, you start that company, do that remodel, do that first 1031 exchange. It's all, it's so new. And the difference here, it's just high stakes, right? If it's lower stakes, you, we don't mind if it's new, but it's higher stakes. Um, it's part of what we, we love what we do. We think the stakes are high and we're, we're part of our, 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 our core value is being great stewards with um, the opportunity to serve you and your family and to connect with really amazing people that can help execute this business plan. Um, but if it wasn't for the tax, none of us would be here. But the fact that there is tax, we are here. So that's great, great thoughts, Rebecca. Um, any particular questions that you have on anything that I said that you want me to clarify that uh, perhaps it could be helpful? Um, no, I think uh, really what hit the spot as well was just being able to talk to people that are utilizing the DST, just like in real estate or financial advising, you know, being able to talk to clients that are utilizing it so that that builds that extra sense of trust. To me, that's one of the biggest things that you talk yeah, about. Yeah, so we're gonna ask ChatGPT. In fact, Gordon had a great, great idea here. And Gordon, here we go. I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to create an introductory letter for a prospective DST client. So create, you ready? A, and Gordon, what, what and remind me, Gordon, are you, um, are you selling? What are you, what are you selling? Where are you from? We'll do it for you. We'll do it for we'll do it for Rebecca. Um, so are you, are you a realtor selling luxury? Are you a business broker? Are you a commercial real estate agent? Like what are you selling? And I'll make it customized to you. Um, you can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah, I'm um, recuperating right now in the process of undergoing uh, chemotherapy for cancer. So I had to bench myself for the last few months, but I'm getting back into it and uh, want to focus on uh, uh, commercial real estate. I think the residential market is just too crazy. Uh, we have no inventory, is what to speak of. Uh, okay, okay where are you located, Gordon? In Vermont. Okay, hold on, here we go. In Vermont. Um, and, and so is there a particular product that you specialize in for commercial, like industrial, office, multifamily, or? Multifamily and... Uh, okay. um, Commercial, um, working on a deal with uh, an op um, cannabis growing opportunity for. Uh, okay. Myself. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, about a two million dollar deal. So we'll see. Okay, got it. I put client, a client, and prop, client and property are located in Vermont, and property are located in vermont okay let's see what happens here so i'm going to say create an introductory letter for a prospective multi-family seller who may want to use a dst do you know what their um do you know what the gain of the property is if it's selling for two million gordon like what's the what's the um basis not the final number but they've owned it for like 25 years or so, so. I basis is zero i'll yeah. put owned for over 25 years any particular reason why you think they might want to sell um they want to move to uh, california to be close to family <laughs> okay there it is so it wants to sell so they can move to california and be close to family client and property are located in vermont um huge capital gains tax okay this will be fun all right i'm going to click on that and then we'll do one for rebecca let let it do its work here for a second um that's interesting gordon and uh i wish you all the best in, in on your recovery how's everything going there um one day at a time you know I mean, it's i'm making progress my doctor's pleased with my numbers so that's encouraging you know so yeah 
Well, we wish and pray for all the best and quick recovery. And and uh, how long have you been in Vermont? Um, since day one. <laughs> since since you were born, huh? Right. I got licensed back to me in uh, um, 1973. Then I took a detour in IT support. Um, and uh, you get to a certain stage and they you know, realize they can hire three kids out of college for what they're paying you. You know, I got back into real estate back in 2004. So it's been a fun. All right, here we go. Taxi P is ready. You ready, Gordon? Yeah. All right. Dear client name, trust this letter finds you well. My name is Gordon Miller, a trusted commercial real estate specialist, um, a trusted commercial real estate professional specializing in multifamily and commercial properties for owners such as yourself. I understand you have been the proud owner of a multifamily property in Vermont. I think it's multifamily for over 25 years, a testament to your foresight and astute investment abilities. Owning an asset that has appreciated significantly over the years can indeed be a double-edged sword, bringing with it substantial capital gains tax obligations. This is particularly the case if the basis is zero, as I understand it, as I understand it to be with your property. My aim is to offer you a solution that can potentially minimize this financial burden while ensuring you have the resources to transition to your next life, your, your next life stage with ease. Given your plans to sell your property and move to California to be closer to your family, I believe a financial strategy known as the Deferred Sales Trust DST may be an excellent option for your consideration. This strategy offers a method to defer capital gains tax on the sale of your property, potentially freeing you up more of your capital for your upcoming move and future plans. I understand that this that this may be a significant decision and one that may require a deeper conversation and analysis. Please allow me the opportunity to present how the DST might fit into your financial picture and answer any questions you might have about the strategy. Your next chapter in California should be about making memories with your family, not worrying about tax obligations. I'm here to help facilitate that transition for you as much as as, as much ease as possible, with as much ease as possible. Please feel free to contact me at your earliest convenience. I'm looking forward to assisting you with this journey. Warm regards. Gordon Miller. Gordon, what do you think? Wow. That's amazing. It's incredible. All right. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it into the chat so everyone has this. Um, does anyone have any comments on that? What chat GPT for just did for us there? Anybody? You want to give chat GPT a, a round of applause? <laughs> I, I think it's fun to play this game in the sense that chat GPT is an AI is pulling data from everywhere out there. And it shows how aligned we are with what we're educating people with. And we're not as smart as AI, I would say. Right. <clears throat> so anyway. Yeah. And I think it, it leads into the dilemma of control with the DST. It's the dilemma of, you know, choose your control. You can have the Vermont property and the tax and the burden of owning and feeling like you got to hold on to the thing or do a 1031. That can control your time and your energy versus what you want with the freedom being moving to California to spend time with family, grandkids, be on the beach, travel, you know, new place, like choose your control, right? Now the, you know, so I would, I would, you know, I, I hope it would be that the ROI for the deferred sales trust and the control giving up and having faith and trust that we're going to be great stewards um, with the trust and with you to build it together would mean that the freedom makes, you know, unlocks the freedom that, is it is not to me it's not a, it wouldn't be a hard trade but it could be a hard trade i don't know jake any thoughts on that you know I, I think at the end of the day when you want to do something bigger and better you need to bring a team to the table to help accomplish that and it's better when the team is not just transactional meaning that they show up for a job once and then you never see them again in fact amongst consumer ratings of professionals whether that's an accounting professional, financial professional, legal professional, what have you, their biggest complaint is that they pay all this money for a service that they get one time and then those professionals go away. Whereas with this scenario, with the Deferred Sales Trust, we end up in a certain way becoming tied to you throughout the life of the trust. And that is scary in some sense because it's almost like getting married. So you need to analyze who you're going to be working with for a long period of time. But at the same time, it also solves the most common consumer dilemma of, hey, I paid all this money, I got this thing done, and then I never see these people again. 
And so it is not the answer for everybody, but it is the answer for many who would like to have an ongoing relationship with that financial accounting, legal, whatever professional, and um, help guide them ongoing throughout the life of the trust. Excellent. Yeah. And by the way, I, 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 um, we're going to put it in the chat there. I had to change a few things from what they said because I didn't put the prompt in there, but I had to add Gordon Miller's name to it. So it should be in the chat here soon. In fact, my assistant should put it in there. So Rebecca, I'm writing it for you now. So um, it'll, it'll be here in a second. Um, <laughs> anyone else have any questions or thoughts? Uh, we want to, I know we're, we're, we're sort of uh, ab living a little bit here with ChatGPT today. Um, on yeah. An actual deal, you have a question or for a client. We have uh, Rodney, we have TC, we have um, Jasmine, we have Gordon, we have, we have talked about we have Caden. Um, so we, we had a fellow here yeah. that was the proud owner of a solar company in, in Utah. He okay. was only able to be here for the first half of the meeting, but he has some questions and said that he would join next week. Oh, great. Okay, great. We'll look forward to see him see him when he gets back. That's that sounds great. Or next week. So but I would love I would love for Jasmine and and Caden to say hi to the group. They're uh, contacts of mine that decided to join us for the very first time today. Hi, my name is Jasmine. So good to meet you guys. Sorry, my computer decided to not work this morning. So <laughs> I'm on my cell phone, but um, this has all been very interesting. Thank you so much for allowing me to join. Welcome, Jasmine. Thank yeah, thanks so much. Where Thank are you calling you. from? I'm calling from Utah. All right. Yeah. Yes. I was just yes. in Salt Lake for the uh, for the commercial real estate conference, best ever conference about two months ago. What, what part of Utah? I'm in Sandy. I'm in okay. Sandy and I'm originally from New York. So sometimes, you know, Utah, I love Utah. I love Utah. And it's interesting that you guys have someone joining um, within the solar industry. Um, it's something that I've definitely been looking into as of late. So it's a very mm -hmm. lucrative business. What part yes. of New York are you from? Queens. All right, cool. Yes. When did you move to Utah? Yeah. That's a big change, yeah? <laughs> it really is. So I moved to Utah when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And um, I I went back to New York when I was probably about 19, 20. And I didn't really last. I didn't love it. <laughs> yeah. It's very different growing up somewhere, then you become an adult, and then you move back and you're just like, yeah, this isn't for me. I get it now. So sure. but yep. But I mean, it's always going to be a part of my identity. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> my wife and I spent a little bit of time in New York and Manhattan, like no kids la last October. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, Manhattan's also different parts. New York's so big and so different everywhere. My yes. my good friend lived in Queens and then mm -hmm. Astoria, Astoria, something. Astoria. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. That's where I'm from. Oh that's my funny. gosh. That's so funny. Yes. Yeah. So that's, he lived there for like 10 years. <laughs> And then yeah. he worked for the NFL. He was from California. And so after high school, mm -hmm. he just, uh, after graduating college, mm -hmm. he flew out there and he's never left. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it works for him. You know, I mean, he's now yeah. in Manhattan and he, you know, takes the train and goes to, yeah. goes to the corporate stuff. So, but uh, works for the NFL, which is cool. He got me a free ticket to the, to the nice. um, Super Bowl about three, four years ago, which is really cool. But well, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice well, to meet you. Well, it's great to meet you. Thank you. This has been very informative. I'm I'm happy to be a part of this. Well, happy Thank happy you. to have you again. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank and then you. was there Clayton too? Was the other one, Jake? Caden, Caden, and Caden's oh, a little bit closer to you. Well, it kind of depends, Brett. Are you in California or Florida today? Yeah, we're in tax point today. Um, we're we're staying in, in vacationing here with the family. Um, but uh St. Augustine is our new headquarters um as of this year. So but yeah, Caden, where are you located at? Oh, you're on mute. Still unmute. Maybe he can hear us. Maybe he's not there. That's okay. I don't know if you can give him the invite to unmute. Yeah, I can. Uh, let me click on that. Caden to unmute. Ask unmute. And in the meantime, I'm going to read. You guys ready for Rebecca? Rebecca, you ready? Rebecca, you, are you still on here, Rebecca? I don't know if she's I'm still one. here. All right, here we go. All right, dear, give me a client name, Rebecca. Who who is the who is like the big client you're trying to help out with? Or Caden, are you ready? Caden might be ready now. I see I see his video there. Is Caden ready? Caden? No? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> dear Mr. Lake Tahoe, Mrs. Miss Lake Tahoe, who've owned the property for many, many, 20 years, right? I trust this letter finds you in good health. And high spirits. My name is Rebecca, a seasoned real estate professional specializing in luxury properties within the trucking Lake Tahoe areas. 
I understand you own a remarkable property in Lake Tahoe, a testament to your discern, discerning taste and investment acumen. Now, I, you know, Rebecca would know as a real estate professional, you put the actual address, right? And you might even say, I've driven by it, you know, 150 times or whatever, right? And I just love something that's unique about the location. So chat GPT doesn't know this, but had I given them the address and told them to do that, it could do that, right? But so little, little ad lib there. Navigating the sale of a high value asset, like a $30 million property, I told Chat TV it's worth $30 million, uh, brings a unique set of challenges. One of the most significant being the prospect of substantial capital gains tax. As your property has undoubt undoubtedly appreciated over the years, it is likely that imp imp the impending tax obligation may be considerable. Considering your current circumstances and plans for the future, I believe that a financial strategy known as the Deferred Sales Trust could be an extremely valuable tool for you. A DST can offer a way to defer capital gains tax on the sale of your property, allowing you to unlock more of your capital for your next endeavors. Understand that the concept of a DST and its potential implications may warrant a detailed conversation. I would like to offer my expertise and time to answer your questions, your, your curies, I'm sorry, and provide a comprehensive understanding of how a DST might be beneficial in your scenario. Selling your Lake, Lake Tahoe property should be, should be about celebrating a successful chapter in your life, not getting overwhelmed by financial complexities. My primary goal is to help you ensure your real estate journey is as seamless and rewarding as possible. Please feel free to contact me at your earliest convenience to discuss this further. I'm eager to assist you in this transition and make your experience a positive one. Best regards, Rebecca, and then your contact information. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Sounds fancy, doesn't it? It does sound fancy and very... Um to the point without being too salesy, I guess, right? I don't know, sounds like me, I like well, it. Um, well, my assistant will be putting it into the chat so you can copy and paste <laughs> that and whoever's on here can copy and paste that and, and adapt it for your um, particular use. Uh, I chat, courtesy of chat GPT. So um, that's part of the little bonus you get by being live here with us. And if you're not live, contact us, you know, reach out to us, let us know. We're happy to share the script with you. Uh, okay. We can have one more person say hello. This is yes. possibly a new team member. Her name is Maria Ledesma. Hi, I'm Maria. Nice to meet you guys. Like this, Maria, where are you calling from? I'm in Park City, Utah. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Are you originally from there? Where are you from? Yeah, I am from here in Park City. This is where I grew up. Cool. How did you how how did you get connected with Jake? Um, through my boss, <laughs> my current one, um, okay. Travis. Yeah. Awesome. Well, great. Oh, okay. very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So driving around Salt Lake and just all the mountains. I had been there like ten years ago, but I didn't really realize just how amazing and beautiful all the mountains are. So Park City is like that's like one of the top like you know snowboarding ski places, right? Like up there. Yes, it's the largest ski resort um in the U.S. Yeah. Okay. Even bigger than I thought. Wow. That's very, very cool. And then what, what's your role with uh, Jake and what are you look, most looking forward to? Um, so looking to be executive assistant. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. That's really cool. And did you, you snowboard or ski or both or? Um, craziness. I don't, I am scared of heights. I know I can see the resort from my house. I mean, it's beautiful. Okay. Love it. But I am scared of like the gondola chairlifts, okay. you know, just like feet dangling. <laughs> <laughs> that's legit i get that it's kind of like when i grew up in california everyone's they always assume that i surfed They're like oh you're a surfer i'm like ah I'm yeah like two and a half hours from the beach i mean i guess in your scenario you don't have as much of an excuse because you can actually you know in this scenario see the beach but you can see you can see the uh the chairlifts but uh yeah. okay that's cool then you, you just you know you can watch all the people right and, and yeah, all the I craziness mean, i enjoy the snow it's beautiful yeah. uh i have a son my son's 11 so I, uh he does take ski lessons so oh. i him i drop him off he goes has a blast just pick him up after that's great right because that might be scary seeing him going up on the on the ski lift right you're like oh my gosh you know i think if i went and i'm freaking out then he'll freak out and then we're both mm -hmm. freaking out so right. <laughs> so make sure to yeah just stay calm mom right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense well very cool nice to meet you Mira, and welcome welcome to uh the mastermind and glad to have you here so kaden is kaden back is he is he or is he the chat Kaden wasn't able to get his sound to turn on but oh, he, okay. he said that he'd join again in the future and he's a, he's an enrolled agent he does tax returns and he's also a financial advisor oh, so he wears both hats and he's there in florida okay awesome we'll, we'll see him hopefully next week does anyone else have any questions before we wrap it up we're almost at the top of the hour i think we've had a great meeting today brett i think so too i think that was fun <laughs>
By the way, for a show of hands, should I, or uh, put one in the chat, should we do the chat GPT again with potential questions and objections and kind of talk through them? I think it kind of gave us a pretty good framework, but what what is it? If everyone says yes, put a one in the chat. If you're not sure, maybe put a two, but what, what do you guys all think? Okay, we got some ones. So we got at least two ones, three ones. Okay, cool. Jake, what do you think? Well, I think it's it's definitely fun. We should do it. Okay. It's it's validation is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it also helps us articulate what's, you know, the emotions or the thoughts that we have and then um, and then address them. So they're all valid, right, when it comes to the dilemma with control. But like anything, it just takes, takes this time and it takes getting to know each other. So, um, okay, great. Well, I want to thank everybody. And I want to ask Jake, Jake, people want to find you. Where can they find you? Absolutely. Strategictaxsolutions.com is a website where you can actually book an appointment. And if, if, if you like to call, instead of just booking online, you can call us at 1-800-773-1848. Excellent. And if people want to get in touch with me, go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. That's capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. Look for the new book. Just got released about four weeks ago. It's called Building a Capital Gains Tax Exit Plan. And it's on Amazon, the Jake Mellers in the book, as well as Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. I got a couple of chapters too, but um, it's it got hit number one bestseller. Pretty cool. Uh, so we're excited about that. I think you're really going to enjoy that. So I'll pick that up and then go to capitalgainstaxers.com if you want to get started with your deferred sales trust and or join our mastermind or get connected with us. Thank you so much. Promise to do better next Brett. time. Congratulations on having the book hit number one bestseller. Oh, thank you. And thank congratulations to you too, because you're you're part, you're a co-author, right? In the book. So it's 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 a good thing. Anyway, we'll see everybody next time. Bye, everybody.